Alright guys, I'm back. I'm filming the videos back to back here as you can see. So, in this part of the video, I'm going to share three cozy mysteries that I recently, new mysteries that I recently read and I didn't like as much as the ones that I presented in the previous video. Alright, so we'll, this is just going to piggyback off of that one. So the first one is Murder is Binding by Lorna Barrett. This is the first book in her uh, bookshop. What's it called? The book, a book Town Mystery series, uh, which, you know, the book, the bookstore thing is, you know, it's kind of done, 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 and super done, okay? But anyway, uh, this stars an um, amateur sleuth bookshop owner named Trisha Miles. Uh, she lives on this sort of, you know, the small town, you know, she has her, her little shop on the, the little, the downtown fairway or whatever you call those things. But in that particular area of town has, uh, as a mystery bookshop, which is hers, you have a cook store, cook book shop, cook store, and all these other little like niche places of bookshop. That's why it's called the bookshop, mystery bookshop. One of Trisha's um, neighbors in the whole business area, that of a woman named Doris who owns a cook shop, book, cook book shop. Goodness me. Oh my God. Okay. I hope you guys can keep with the, keep up with this. But anyway, Doris is the one that is false victim as the you know cozy mystery she's the one that's murdered and then of course Trisha goes about subsequently trying to solve the what happened to Doris and it has a few interesting twists a lot of them have been played before now I know that this is kind of a fairly popular book that's been recently released within I think the past 10 years or recently debuted in, in 2008 okay now, I'm going to say the reason that I'm on the fence of continuing this series is that, um, simply put, I don't necessarily like Trisha. My dislike for her came much more within her, um, the display of her relationship with her older sister. Her older sister, they are two different girls. Trisha, obviously, you know, per her recapping of their past and their histories and their raising their parents, she was the child who did not receive as much attention as her older sister. Her older sister received a lot of attention because she was such much more outgoing. And that outgoing goes in both, like, being in trouble at times, as well as, you know, maybe some other smaller things that her parents knew that they needed to keep a closer eye out on her. So, Trisha, you know, she more or less got on the back burner as a child. She was that reliable child that parents often think that don't need that much attention, but they really do need a lot of attention and emotional support. But anyway, Trisha has harbored this grudge against her sister for years because of this. And then when Trisha's sister comes roaring into town, already setting up dates, already trying to move in on Trisha's life to get an apartment in the area. You know, Trisha wants her sister to move. Like, why are you here? You know, she's like, why are you here? This is my town. Get out, right? That's all well and good. I think the author did a good job of sort of taking the reader through, I won't say the emotions, but taking the readers through their sort of developing, you know, to try to get closer together as a sisterhood. But Trisha, at the end of the day, I found her to be obnoxious. Um, she did way too much more whining about the past. Her sister was, was making attempts to to straighten out and iron out their relationship and you know Trisha was always putting up that, that wall she always had something smart to say she always had a rebuttal to her sister's attempts at trying to sell salvage their relationship moving from that point forward and I just kind of found it really it just found Trisha to be annoying point point makes it you know period I mean I understood their dynamic but I don't know I think it just kind of rubbed me the wrong way with how this character was drawn. I'm still trying to see where their relationship is going to go. So, you know, I'm a little hesitant. But I do want to read the second book and see what happens between the two. And at the end of the day, honestly, I found Trisha's sister to be much more of the star of this particular story than Trisha herself. Which is very, very interesting, okay? But that's just how I felt. So the next book that I'm on the fence or hesitant about reading further in, although I did buy the second book, I'm going to give it one more chance, is Fool's Puzzle by Erlene Fowler, by, and this is the first book in her Benny Harper series. Benny Harper is an ex-cowgirl. She, you know, she's recently, I think she lost her husband, 
Yeah, she lost her husband. She lost her husband, and to make a change within her life, she moves to California. She takes on this job in a in a museum that's I don't want to say specializes, but a museum that's themed around folk uh, folk art, especially that of quilting, folk art quilts. And Fool's Puzzle is actually a, a type of folk, a type of pattern. Um, and I think that the author does that with each title. They're representative of a pattern, a specific pa uh, quilting pattern. But um, in this particular book, as a director of the Museum of Folk Art and Quilting, one of the artists is found murdered within the museum. And Benny, of course, is the amateur sleuth. She's, you know, she goes about trying to, as a cozy mystery, it, it protagonist goes to solve what happened to this author. I mean, to this artist. Okay, so the reason, I have two reasons why this book got on my nerves. And probably more. I'll put a link to my blog post on it there if I forget to, you know, bullet point what I want to say here. But the number one thing that irritated me about this book is that I was hoping to get more information or to receive more uh, knowledge or understanding on quilting. All right. Look, I, I like, I just like cozies. Okay. I cozies give you that those little nuggets of things, right? I was hoping to receive more of that. I was hoping to receive more of the folk art, you know, subject matter coming up as it regards like quilting and thing, you know, that sort of thing. And also on, the, on top of that, much more into Benny as a director of this museum. I wanted to see more about that whole process and, you know, those administrative duties and that sort of thing. And some of it, of course, was there. But leading to the second reason why this got on my nerves is the fact that I felt like the author was much more focused beyond the, the theme, beyond the hook, beyond the murder mystery. She was much more focused on making sure that Benny uh, solidified herself in this relationship with a, a police officer, the detective of the particular murder. Everything revolved around him to me every single step Benny made every single step he made they all revolved around bringing these two characters together and I found that to be incredibly irritating I am always on the fence about romance and mysteries I've always said this before there has to be some judiciousness when it comes to that but this right here when I got to the end of the book I saw that the underlining focus was to make sure that Benny and this detective connected one, with one another and all of the other really much more interesting and it wasn't subtle but all of the other much more interesting elements got put which given me the reason to pick this up in the first place got pushed to the side and you know Benny to me she wasn't really that of a likable character I didn't say I, I wouldn't say I disliked her but she was more aligned as I said in my previous video to one of those main protagonists that that the author tries to make likable and tries to make relatable that instead of those three those two things happening they become much more of obnoxious and silly type of characters Benny was that and I mean, that was really disappointing for me you know giving her position within this museum as like a director I was hoping that she would be a much more capable and solid character you know what I mean but I bought the second book I'm hoping that maybe things will change, perhaps. I'm really not sure what I'm going to be looking forward to in that second reading. But there was just enough in here, just like this one, there was just enough in there. And believe me, I have read plenty of books where they only got one shot. But there was just enough in there to convince me to try the second one, to see what the author is going to do. We don't know. Now, the next book is a book that is so popular so popular of a cozy mystery or historical cozy mystery or whatever you want to say it's a lot of things but it's so popular that y'all probably choke the hell out of me for bringing this up and on the list comma i have to put her royal spiders by rice bowen on this list got to do it got to do it all right so this right here is a, a collection of the first three books and um, when I can find things like this, I'm always excited because it gives me the chance to read, you know, the first three books and decide whether or not I want to continue the series or not. So Her Royal Spiness has two more chances. First of all, the books take place in London during the 1920s, 1930s. 
And it follows the story of a woman named Georgie. Georgie is late 20s, I think she's like mid-20s, late 20s. She is, uh, technically she's a princess. She's like 34th or 35th in line for the, the throne. Um, but, you know, the males come first and there's subsequent um, uh, heirs. And so, she, you know, she has, she's she's in a long line of, of being able to even, even touch the throne. But, you know, she has aristocratic background. She has royal blood. But that doesn't necessarily give her all the privileges of royal, royalty. She has her own different little struggles. A lot of that coming down to financial problems. The added disadvantage that she has is that her father, who is directly linked to the royal family, had her with a movie, an American movie star actress. So, you know, that wasn't exactly very, you know, the royal family wasn't exactly filling that copulation. Okay, we'll just leave it there. So that leaves poor Georgie furthermore on the outskirts of her family. Nonetheless, because she spent so much of her life being pampered, you know, after her father died and her mother decides to sail around the world as a, as a star getting involved with different men after their breakup she's mostly being taken care about taken care of by her brother and her brother's wife and because she is single not many prospects on the line her brother and her brother's wife are trying to orchestrate this whole thing where you're going to try to get her hooked up so that she can get out of their way and they can live their life Georgie decides to beat them to the punch. She moves out of their chateau, their mansion, and she and she moves into this small house that's owned by her family in the city, of, in, much more in London, in downtown London. This house, although it belongs to the family, it is tied up with a couple of bad dealings that her father had, money, gambling, that sort of thing, to meet his financial goals. And she is visited by a property owner who wants to take her father's property in the estate for himself then he unfortunately ends up being murdered in Georgie's own bathtub and that's where the mystery jumps off now I now here's the thing that I loved and disliked about this book first of all the mystery of the murder took the murder took place a hundred pages in that's like no no a hundred pages in is when the mystery started to take place it was almost like before then it was this story about this outskirted royal woman who was trying to be you know who was trying to make a life for herself the best way she knew how that would include disguising herself as a housemaid so that she could make money and take care of herself she was on the mend you know she was trying to you know, be independent and you know not rely on her brother and her family for her financial needs. That first 100 pages of Georgie going through that process were excellent to me. It was wonderful seeing her try to be the woman that she wanted to be. Like, I love that first 100 pages. And you would think that when the mystery set in, that because this is a cozy series, that all of that would switch and it would amplify. But no, to me, once the murder took place, that's when the story, sadly, to me, it just kind of nosedived. I'm sorry to say that I don't, it felt like, I think I said this at this point, but it felt like the first 100 pages was were a completely different story. And I loved it. Like, if the book was really just about Georgie trying to, you know, assert herself as the woman that she wanted to be, not relying on her royal blood and her family, I thought it would have been excellent. I don't know where it would have went. But I thought it would have. But I thought it would have been excellent. But I'm telling you, for me, when the murder took place, that's when it nosedived. Why the book had a fair amount of humor. It is humoristic. It has comedy. You know, Georgie is silly in her own little ways, but she always tried to be cap that capable character as well. I don't know what happened, but after the murder took place, that's when I mean, it's like. The author cranked it up and, it, and everything. It just got mud. It, as it progressed, it just got sillier and sillier and sillier and sillier. It's almost like it really, it derailed to me. That's the only way I know how to put it. It just felt like it derailed. You know, all the characters who were surrounding Georgie, they became much more irritating. All of Georgie's little antics as it regards solving the murder were all just outlandish you know it was just it was just too it was like it was just too much 
and then everything revolved around coincidences this person just happened to be at this party at this time and you know all those sort of things i don't know i'm not sure what happened i honestly don't know what happened but it really i, I keep in my mind i keep going back to after those 100 pages it was just like it, it went it just circled the drain and it went on down you know and that's the only way i know how to explain it but there were a few redeeming qualities that I loved about the book. I loved and I want to see more of Georgie's relationship with her brother. That was probably the number one thing that I liked. Although he felt like he was much smarter than her. You know, she had an edge as it concerns intelligent why she had an edge over him. So it was almost like he was feeling like, you know, he had to be the man to look out for her. But she was the one who was really looking out for him. I like I liked that. And I liked her relationship with her sister-in-law that was a little bit acrimonious as well they had like their little they, you know they was praying around being you know not exactly cordial with one another like that but i went ahead and bought this collection because i'm going to read the second book of royal pain and a royal flush i'm going to see what happens maybe i think i'm thinking that i'm hoping that the author got everything out in that first book and would be able to tell a better mystery i know that you know that's not a popular opinion of a royal spyness i know that's like a super popular book i understand it believe me i love i'm like I'm, so, I'm not trying to be hyperbolic but i thought the first 100 pages in that book were fantastic i love that mix of 1920s that humor the um the really strong or leading kind of protagonist character who was reasserting herself in life um you know even at the detriment of having to bring herself down some levels and clean houses good stuff good stuff but when that i'm this is what i keep coming back to after that murder took place it, was, it went downhill for me i'm sorry to say but i would love to hear you guys opinions on these three books like i said i didn't give up on them they just weren't that much of a winner to me and um we'll see what happens so if you read any of these three authors of the b3 cozy series i'm getting tongue tied please leave, a, leave me a comment as to why you did like them and if you didn't like them i would definitely love to hear that as well so peace see y'all later